Diaspora Connect on AAU TV. AAU TV is the voice of higher education in Africa. And the Diaspora Connect program is dedicated to showcasing the achievements of Africans in the diaspora and how they are giving back to Africa. My name is Ransford Beckwin and I am the host of the program. Today, we are at the University of Education in Winneba and I'm privileged to be welcoming an African who is a strong academic and also doubles as a traditional leader in Ghana. But before I introduce the guest for today's program, let's go for a short break. You can follow us on all our social media handles and also on our dedicated website, tv.aau.org. Stay tuned in. You may not have heard about us, but we have heard about you. You've been searching for a new kind of university that matches your ambition. Our world-class education is renowned, but there is more to us. Meet the university in Ghana that is transforming Africa. One that is nurturing a new generation of ethical, entrepreneurial leaders. One that offers scholarships thanks to the Massacre Foundation, so that you can be part of our community of students who stand for integrity, discipline, and excellence. There is only one such university, only one, where 100% of graduates receive job offers or graduate school admissions. You may not have heard about us, but we have heard about you. You are Africa's future, and we are Ashesi University College. Together, we can begin to create a new Africa. Welcome back from the break. You are still tuning to AAU TV. AAU TV is the voice of higher education in Africa. Just before the break, I had indicated that I'm interviewing an academic who is from the diaspora. Precisely, he's from Canada and he lectures at University of Toronto. He is an educationist, he is a researcher, and he's a writer. And back here in Ghana, he's a traditional leader. It is my privilege to introduce Professor George Sefa Day. Professor, welcome to AAU TV. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Prof, we will, we will have to delve a little bit into your background. Right. And then we talk about you as an academic. And then we talk about the Carnegie African Diaspora Program. Can you let us know a little bit about who Professor Day is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much for the, the opportunity and having the time to, for us to um, chat. Right. Um, I, I was born in Ghana right? um, and I schooled in Ghana. Uh, I went to uh, Ghana National College in Cape Coast. And then after that, I went to the University of Ghana, Ligon. Uh, fortunately, I did get a scholarship uh, to do my master's at McMaster University. And then upon completion of my master's, I went to the University of Toronto for my doctorate. Okay. Right. Uh, and that was, um, I got my doctorate in 1986. 1986. Yeah, and I did my postdoc at the University of Windsor. Uh, and then in 1991, I got an eternal track appointment to the University of Toronto. So I've been at the University of Toronto since 1991. Okay. And I was full professor in 1996. So since um, 1996, I've been a full professor at the University of Toronto. Okay. Um, I'm, I've also been head of the department at the time called Social, Sociology and Equity Studies Education. Um, and I have been and currently also is a director for the Center for Integrative Anti-Racism Studies at the University of Toronto okay. in Canada. Yes, just before you, you left for abroad, mm -hmm. what were you reading at the university? Yeah, I was reading sociology uh, and then also archaeology. Okay. Yeah, sociology and archaeology. And did, did you have any mentor at that time? Um, that's a good question. I think I, I see my mentor has always been my mother, okay. right? But academic-wise, I think all my professors, right? Uh, because I know there was Merrick Posnansky and then the late James Akwanda, um, who were all, all very um, impressed about my academic work, okay. and also the sociologist, uh, Fia Jo, at the time, right? Uh, but I, I see my mentor has always been my mother, uh, because our dad died when we were very young, right? Wow. My man, mother was the one who looked after us. Unfortunately, two years ago, she. Uh, three years away. ago, actually, she also passed away in Canada. Mm -hmm. and we brought her to Ghana for the burial. Right? Mm -hmm. 
How easy was it for you to, you know, have a scholarship mm -hmm. to read sociology mm -hmm. at a master's yeah. degree? I, I think um, I, I, my, my master university uh, yes. gave me that, that scholarship. Okay. I just applied, I applied um, for the scholarship and, and won it. And actually, I was also in line for university, at the time, University of Ghana had this program where um, they would also be sponsoring students for their postdoctorate, okay. right? Okay. For the, yeah, but I got a master yeah. scholarship well, after my my national service, I left, oh, right. Now right. was sociology a very popular program, academic program? No, actually, um, when I went, I went to anthropology. You social anthropology. Social, okay. But social anthropology is offered in the anthropology department, but mm. in Ghana, social anthropology will be seen as sociology, mm. uh, but also, yeah, yeah. Mm. So I think it, uh, it's a question of, I think, uh, what the focus was on, right? Okay. Uh, I'm more interested in questions of traditional African cultures, okay. uh, but also interested in questions of history mm. and uh, uh, what the connection between history and culture in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. But you left the shores of Ghana in 1979. 79, yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I left the shores of Ghana. That was to read the <laughs> masters. Yeah, to do the masters and then continue for the doctorate. But uh, for the past uh, over 15 years, I've been coming back and forth to Ghana. Um, <laughs> but earlier, what? Why it's, did you not come back? No, it's because I was a student and yeah, also student. after the um, degree, you have to make sure you have cemented your your, your feet, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you should I, have come back to Oh, yeah, Africa. but I was. In fact, I, I, I was because in 1983, I came to do my research okay. and I was coming also. Okay. Yeah, I was but coming. But just in terms of in terms of institutional linkage, okay. right? Yeah. Institutional but I thought you wanted to pick up an appointment, a teaching appointment uh, or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 it, it, yeah, but... I, it's, that time is different from now, and I think, okay. yeah, that, yeah, I see what mm. you mean. But mm. uh, that time is different from now in terms of where you want to uh, also cement your feet. And um, I had a family also in Canada at the okay. time, so okay. yes, so yeah. Mm. Right. Okay. yeah. But do you mm. have a strong linkage mm. to Ghana or any institution in Ghana? Oh apart yeah. From the Kanaji oh yes, yeah. No, the before the Kanaji, I, I th um, through um, uh, the former vice chancellor of. University of Education, Professor Anna Momensa. In fact, uh, there were many universities that were interested in me having some bit. Anna Momensa wanted me to come to uh, Winneba, right? Okay. And I like Winneba because it's a small university at the time, fledging, and I thought there were possibilities for that university. So after Professor Anna Momensa, also I developed ties with uh, the Vice Chancellor who came after him, Akwesi okay. Asabre, Ameyao, right? And then the current uh, the VC Vice Chancellor, Vice Chancellor Bruni. I have all connections with all of these people, right? And, uh, and of course, having been here, I've developed this long relationship with Professor Kola Rahim, right? Okay. Who we've been working together for over a decade, mm. right? Around issues of indigenous knowledge. And he's been very, very supportive. And he's been very, very instrumental in making sure that I won the um, Carnegie for the years 2016, 2015, 2016, and then 2018 and 19, okay. uh, in which I've been attached to the University of. So uh, the, the, the Carnegie grant, mm. yeah, it's only taking you to Ghana. Yes, okay. yes. Although University of South Africa wanted me to, at some point, uh, but also University of Development Studies. Okay. But I've been for the, so far I've been attached with um, University of Education because there's more to be done here in terms of that. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But University of South Africa, you need to yeah, give I'm, you a, an award. Yes. In 2017. Yes. I thought it's got 2012. To 2012. Yes. I thought it's, it's got to do with the, the no no that okay. that I was because you see remember even before the Kennedy I've always been uh, spending my summers with universities in uh, Africa University of South Africa uh, Adeniran College Los, uh, University of uh, um, Lasu what is Lasu yeah Lagos State, Lagos State University, University yeah so okay. yes so. Even before okay. the Kennedy, I always had these connections with okay. it. Now let's look at two um, mm -hmm. educational cultures. Yeah. You have one in Africa mm -hmm. and then one in Canada. In Canada. Mm -hmm. Is there any distinction between the mode of delivery in terms of curriculum, in terms of um, teacher learner yeah. relationship? Um, not really. I, I think it depends on uh, the people you work with, right? right. Uh, for example, let me. So in Canada, for example, we have people who are interested in these questions about. Uh, student-led um, supervision and, and, and learning, right? Uh, so I'm working with graduate students in Canada. Most of my students are graduate students, but they are mostly PhD students, right? 
So there's that sense of independent study and inquiries. Right? And then you come to SACOS and ARIS. Right? SACOS, um, ARIS is the Institute for Educational Research and Innovation Studies. And SACOS is the school for the, the study of um, uh, community and technology education studies. Right? Um, and they are mostly working with graduate students. Right? So I've always been involved. And so the question of independent study has been very, very central. In, in their delivery, right, where uh, as you, are, you give lectures uh, and then you are in sort of a committee circle with the students and dialogue on the questions that are very important for investigation and, and that. Of course, there's research in that. So the model of debris in that sense to me, I think, I see similarities. It's different when, when you're teaching undergraduates where okay. sometimes it becomes where the lecturer then gives a formal lecture and then the students write down notes and, and that. But I think with graduate school, you're more into every, the consultation, the discussions with students. Yeah. Uh, occasionally, there's the academic sessions that you have, yeah. right, on p important topics. Right, that, um, so I see that as they are more connecting than uh, different. Okay. And you, you, you want to specialize in um, indigenous knowledge? Yeah, no, I have. I have. have uh, yeah, over the years, right? Okay. I have over the years. So I'm more interested. About it. Yeah, I'm, I'm more interested in the question of decolonization, decolonial knowledge. And, mm. Uh, one of the things that I've argued in some of my writings, and other people have made the point that, um, to me, you can't talk of decolonization or decolonial knowledge without also interrogating the whole issue of Western science knowledge. Because Western science knowledge, while well, we can talk of some uh, contributions to knowledge that has been built, of course, no knowledge is immune. All knowledge is borrowed from each other, right? And that. So Western science knowledge itself has borrowed from other forms of knowledge. But the problem is that other forms of knowledge have been either devalued, they have been marginalized or negated uh, in the universalization of Western science knowledge. So the particularity of Western science something, sometimes is universalized, right, without paying particular attention to the multi, multiple knowledges that exist in communities. And to me, indigenous knowledges, African indigenous knowledges, right, have been devalued and marginalized. So it has been a passion to, to bring it to the fore for, for, for discussions. And this is shared by a number of scholars, uh, and it's increasingly it's these scholars talking about that. So who is listening to this voice that you and your colleagues are? Oh, oh I think, I think we, do, we do have people who, right, but the fact that people will cite my work, for example, there are many people who will cite my work. Mm. Uh, but also I think even in a diaspora context, okay. people will see it. And, and, that. and I think when you come to Africa too, right, I think there are people, because I get invitations to speak, on that, and there are scholars who are, who are working around that. Uh, one of the things that I think is very, very clear is that sometimes we are our own harsh critics, right? Uh, because we have been so fed with the dose of Western science knowledge that we see Western science knowledge, and then you talk of indigenous knowledge, and people see it as myth, superstition, uh, magic, and it's not knowledge. But I think if you talk of this knowledge as indigenous science, right? Because it's knowledge about agroforestry. It's knowledge about our indigenous science and technology. It's knowledge about indigenous farming systems. It's knowledge about uh, folkloric production, arts and crafts, right? It's knowledge about, um, in terms of tech, traditional technology, right? Yeah. So it's a question of the definition of this body of knowledge. Yeah. It's about soils, vegetation, climate, mm -hmm. and, and, and that. They are all indigenous forms of knowledge that are embedded in that, right? Yeah. And we need to uncover that. And, and not yeah. as a way to, talk about how they are unique or particular, but also that they have something to contribute to the production of global knowledge. So we, we look okay. at in, in carrying out or mm -hmm. taking this revolution mm -hmm. forward, mm -hmm. what do you need from policymakers? Uh, to pay particular attention to uh, curriculum issues, right? That indigenous knowledge is about basically decolonization or decolonial education. Right. And we cannot do that without paying attention to curriculum, uh, pedagogy, instruction, but also even the whole culture of the school. I think what some of the tensions that we've been talking about is around whether even we can talk about these bodies of knowledge in the current academy has been constituted, where there's this hierarchy, uh, there's also the rectangular shapes, uh, learning within a four-wall classroom and, and that. So you always raise questions about what are the challenges of bringing these bodies of knowledge into formal institutions such as these places. But I think we need to work at a challenge. You know, there are possibilities, right, that we need to look through. Uh, we cannot say this knowledge is have to be taught outside the academy. Yeah. I think there are some of us who would argue that 
when we look at the African institutions, right, and I'm not the only one who is arguing that Malipia Sandy was uh, a, a, a colleague, but also somebody who, uh, I think if you ask about my diasporic mentor, then it's Malifia Santi, right? Okay. Who is a, a very um, profound scholar in the US, right? Okay. Um, you argue about that when we look at African universities, there is no African university aside. There are uh, colonial satellites of the Western Academy, right? We have universities in Africa, but it's different from saying universities in Africa vis-a-vis vis vis African, African universities. universities right? so okay. mm -hmm. It's well, all about what goes on in these institutions. Right. right. Have you ever considered the role of language mm -hmm. in promoting mm -hmm. this indigenous? Big, thing? big issue. Yes. Big, big How issue. How big is it? Yeah, it's big because you can't even talk about indigenous knowledge. I mean, in 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 the the language, the the dominant language, yeah. English, right? Yeah. Or even and we, we don't even have scientific names. Yes, right. In so, the in the local dialects. So, so it's, it's a very very big issue, but we have to start from somewhere. Okay. So why we talk about it in terms of well, how do we even begin to have a conversation around that, yeah. right? We also talk about it in terms of having these centers for the study of indigenous languages. Mm. I think it's very, very critical, mm. right? We talk about bringing elders into the academy, right? Uh, not all elders speak English yeah. or even French, right? Elders speak the local language. So when you bring the elders here, the language issue is very, very pertinent to that. Um, sometimes we talk about these African cultures, right? Uh, in the English language, least corruption, corrupted language, right? So we have problems around that. So the language issue is very, very huge, right? And it goes back in, to history. I remember there was one point where there was this debate about, should we <clears throat> have an indigenous African language that is taught in the schools or we continue to use uh, English, English language? As the and, lingua franca. Yes, lingua yes. franca. And they, the debate was around, well, given that there's the heterogeneity or multiplicity of African languages, which languages do you teach? Yeah. I've always seen that as a cop out, right? You know, I think even if we can teach one African indigenous language mm. to learners in schools, I don't care what language it is, but it's something for them to be proud People of. People are right? opting for Kiswahili. Yes, Kiswahili. And I think yes. there was a point why they were opting for Kiswahili, because it's the language of the smallest ethnic minority. So you don't get the, the dominant ethnic group reproducing its hegemony, right? Mm. So Kiswahili is the language of the smallest I think minority. I think that project was very important to be continued. That project was very, very important to be continued. Okay, I'm talking to Professor <laughs> George Sifade, who is a professor mm -hmm. at the University of Toronto. We are going on a short break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Diaspora Connect on AAU TV and I'm interviewing Professor Sifa who is from University of Toronto. We are going to talk about him as a CAD fellow mm -hmm. and how he's been coming to Ghana and the impact that he's making mm -hmm. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Prof, welcome back yeah. to the program. Sure. Yes, yeah. now let's talk about the, the, CAF, Canadian, the yeah. CAF program. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm excited about this program because I've been in it since 2016, 2017 and then 2018 slash 19. And, and here, um, I've been working with colleagues, uh, Professor Kula Rahim, Professor Namua Mensah, uh, uh, also before that, uh, the Vice Chancellor of the University of, of Ghana, um, the former Vice Chancellor, Professor Akwesia Sabria Mayo, right? And, and uh, uh, these are our colleagues who saw the importance of having somebody with a diasporan voice also yeah. come in, yeah. and so that we engage in dialogue. And through that process, right, I, I have benefited a lot, right, from the academic exchanges the conversations with the students, the research initiatives, the collaborations with the professors and the instructors, right? And, and, and that. I think it's not just a way of also giving back, it's a way of also 
taking in something, right? Okay. I think it makes me grounded in terms of my African research, right? That being able to come to Ghana and stay for this long and being able to, I think it gives you credibility, mm. you know, that you are not talking from the top of your head mm. without being grounded. So I think that is, mm. but also having the, the moment to mentor, to initiate, to dialogue with students, mm. right? To talk to them about their own thesis, their dissertations, their own research projects. Also initiating uh, publications, right? I've been part of collaborative book projects with mm. Professor Rahim, Professor Sabra Meyao, even with the University of South Africa, we have colleagues there, uh, um, Dr. Um, Narida Pasha, and also Malu, right? And that we are still even talking about collaborative book projects, right? We currently, we have four book projects that I'm initiating, uh, working together with Professor Rahim, Kola, Professor Bruni, uh, okay. Professor Kasia Asabri Ame, Joseph Mensah, yeah, okay. so, uh, cool. the former vice chancellor, who, as I said earlier on, was very instrumental in getting me to okay. come to Winnipeg okay. in the first place. Right? Okay. And, and, and that. So, a follow-up question: mm -hmm. So, how many students are you mentoring? Um, oh, a lot. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, forget yeah. about the ones in Toronto, right? Even okay. here, right? Because but, but in Africa here, yeah, in well, yeah. I think what happens is, you occasionally you get students who come to you with their work. Right. right, or even we send you an email because mm. they're afraid about your profile and that, or they know you are around and that. So I don't keep track. I don't keep, don't track. keep track. Yeah, yeah. No, Can I think. Can we say twenty? Uh, I would say no. I would say for in Africa here. Yes. In no, Ghana. I would say twenty. No, no. I would say mm -hmm. uh, def definitely a dozen. Yeah. Is it yeah, that's, 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 I'm talking of doctoral students. Doctoral and, yeah, students. Yeah, I'm talking. I'm not doctoral. talking about yeah, 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 first degree yeah, or second no, degree. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, doctoral yeah. students who would. Okay. And it's not just about here with uh, say. University of Education, sometimes even Winneba, right? And then you sometimes, you, yeah, institutions, yeah, because okay. they get, they see your profile mm. and they, in the, in the, in the, in, 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 like to get in touch and, and, and that. Uh, Very interesting. Yeah. So is so, there any formal agreement between University of Toronto and the University of Education, Winneba? No, I think there is a card, the card, card fellowship, which, fellowship, which Professor Kula and uh, the moments have been very instrumental, mm. right, working with, with that, mm. uh, the card fellow. But in the past, right, we, through, even before the card, right, yeah. and Professor Kula would tell me more about it, before the, even the card, we had this thing where I was coming, I was made a fellow of SACOS, a fellow of SACOS even before the card, yeah. right, which allowed me to come here and, and share, we were doing work on pharmacology, herbal medicine, uh, plants medicine, we were doing some work around that. And we had this academic exchange with the University of Toronto where some students came here and they continued to come here. You met some of them too. They continued to come here. And then there was one student who went to uh, Toronto, okay. right? And uh, so there has been, uh, but we haven't signed a formal memorandum of understanding on that, but we've been initiating that, right? Through this and other ways of doing it. I don't think we need that to formalize that. We, that, we can still get to that, but we have okay. been working on that through the, through the years. With, with, with that. Okay, my very final question. How will you encourage the other Africans in the diaspora mm -hmm. to come back to yeah. Africa? No, I think it's very important. I think this is where the CAD initiative is so important, right? And again, you hear more about how it's been very helpful to the host institutions, right? They do benefit a lot. And as I said to me, I do also learn a lot. But I think it's very important. Uh, it's a way of giving back, mm -hmm. right? So I normally would encourage people to come back as a way of giving back. I mean, it doesn't have to be for three months. It can be one month. It can be... Uh, two months to a way, way of giving back to us. So I think the card initiative is very, very important. It allows us to bring some of the knowledge that we have acquired back to the continent, but also acquired knowledge from the from continent. Continents. So it's, 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 it's two, two ways, ways. Right? right? So it's beneficial. Mm. It also allows us to assist in collaborative work, whether it's publication, research, initiatives, and, and, and that. I think, uh, to me, the fact that it's an African who is in relationship with African, African scholars and that. It's yeah. very, very important, mm. right? Because in the past, what you notice is that uh, sometimes we don't even value our own experts, right? We value experts yeah, who are from, yeah, from other, yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the fellowship initiative allows the validation yeah. of uh, our own experts who yeah. come here and work with, 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 with yeah. African colleagues and scholars and students, right? And, 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 and deal with that, right? We do come even, as we saw today, I mean, having these formal lectures, the questions the students ask, right? It also um, helps you to, in your own work, right? Something that we don't talk about also is that, although it's, it's a card fellowship uh, that allows people to come to the country, we also don't talk about the benefits that it gives to, even still, 
the North American context, right? Mm -hmm. Because when I come here and I hear some of these questions, some of these issues, it does affect the way I teach when I go back mm. to Canada, right? right? So even although it's an issue that is supposed to benefit here, right, it does have uh, benefits also for even the North American as well. We can't escape that, you right? Can't. This is the way of our global world, right? That knowledge circulates, right, and that. Yeah. So when I go, every time I go, I have to shape some of my course satellites from the knowledge that I've get, gained from here, from here right, wow. and, and benefits. Yeah. And also the students, even when they hear about some of these initiatives, they want to come. Mm. They want to come to that, right. To, right, to come. And uh, Professor Kola and I are in this collaborative initiative where we mm. recently we went to the north talking about collaboration. And one of the things we talked about was where if it's possible for some of these students who are in this uh, African diaspora students who are in North America to even come to here, and do some teaching um, workshops and, and that. So this is all part of the the initiatives that come from these dialogues with, with, with that. So, yes, so that's been... Thank you very much, Thank Professor you very much. Nana Sifatunibua right. Day, yes. for being a trailblazer on right. the CARD yeah. Fellowship Program. Yeah. Thank you we very much. We hope to see you very soon yeah. again Thank on you. this university campus. Sure. Take Thank care you. and God bless you. Thank you. And a good conversation we always say never ends. We mm -hmm. can continue to talk and talk and talk. But this is how far time will allow us. Continue to stay tuned into AAU TV and be watching other interesting programs. Take care and bye.